Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the Burgess Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander, and I welcome you on behalf of the 2025 Initiatives Coordination Group. At this full moon, we continue our focus on the topic of the right relation. And today, together we will reflect on the right relations with the planets. As we come in alignment with the sign of Virgo, which is intimately related to our planet Earth. And before we introduce our guest, Let's come together, together in alignment. And I ask Kate to lead us in alignment. Uh, Katya, please unmute yourself. Katya, we cannot hear you. Probably some. Okay, no, now I got unmuted. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Let's get united with light and love and will to good. Let's focus on our individual alignment. And the sound on aligning with the soul. Oh, oh. project into the middle of the group, into our group centers, our individual center. Let's see the bright light, radiating light of the heart center of the group. Connecting to the heart center. Of humanity. It's seeing the lighted network. Of people, goodwill everywhere. Activated and sealed with the energies of Word Virgo. Let's see the triangle of Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity. and see the energies of Virgo 
pouring through those pores. Coming through the great beings that we call Mercury, Vulcan, Neptune, and Jupiter. The golden energy of the second ray of love, wisdom. Pouring onto our planet. And aiding our work. We'd see those energies directed towards the great soul that ensouls our planet. For the purposes of development and establishing the right relationship between humanity and animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and mineral kingdom. And as we say, Gayatri, let's prepare to work together. For thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by the disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Oh, oh. I'm keeping the focus in the center of the group we continue our work thank you thank you Katya and thanks everyone for joining us today on the first day of the full moon and today our guest is a very practical person and uh, um, Brooke Levan who works as a farmer on the land and advises many people about sustainable development and sustainable agriculture and uh, connects heaven and earth through the practical service. And so I invite Brooke. Hello, Brooke. Ah, hello, Alec and Kate and uh, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, uh, it's really an honor for us. And uh, uh, we are open to hear what you're ready to share with us. 
about anthroposophy, about biodynamic farming, and about life on land and work on land. Well, thank and you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, an honor for me as well. So I am showing your slides now, so just guide me and I will be changing the slides and the floor is yours, book. Okay. Um, I'll say up front, uh, maybe I have put too many slides, so uh, I may have you go through them. Uh, I may have you skip a few. I don't know how it's going to go. It should go in the same order, but I might have you just go two more, you know, one or two more, or something like that. I hope that isn't too confusing. Um, so, uh, so I'm Brooke Levan, and uh, with my wife Rose Levan and our children, and uh, many, many others who've come together over the years. Uh, we about. 12, 23 years ago, uh, we were the uh, artists, potters, sculptors, um, and teaching and doing a bunch of other things. And uh, a trip in China, which was more of a seven month expedition along the Yellow River, uh, woke us up to what we needed to do. So, uh, through time, we've followed our bliss, and uh, that came to us pretty clearly, uh, even in the 70s. And but and we let the art track uh, guide us until finally it was China taught us something that we saw environmental degradation there that to us. Uh, uh, maybe it's hard to say what is beyond our imagination, but it was uh, incredible. And so we came back with a different mission. And so we understood that it, uh, we needed to find a place and heal it. We needed to find some land and heal it. And that was our job. And so the art and the working with all of the mineral kingdom and plant kingdoms and and all the other things in the soul and spirit as well uh, would come into being uh, in our relationship with all of the life that we co-create with. And so as artists, uh, we are now, the land is now our laboratory, our studio, so to speak. It's a place to discover what uh, what who we are, I think, and what we are capable of, and how we are a critical element in the healing and the cre co creation of balance and harmony in the world. So let's uh, do another slide here. So again, this is just a title slide. Uh, sustainable settings uh, is a 244-acre place. You can go again, slide. So why do we do what we're doing? Um, we, f we found that we were malnourished. Uh, when I say that we're malnourished, we're malnourished on the physical level and on the etheric level, on the soul level and on the spirit level. Uh, we're disconnected, uh, although we think with all of our technology we are, uh, and we're out of touch with uh, all of the life uh, and out of relationship and out of balance. Next slide. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, these are unfortunate realities. I went to the eye doctor the other day and you know how he says, uh, can you see this or this, you know? And so uh, here is a little demonstration of what's going on in our food system. Uh, the pigs on top are our pigs on grass and the other pigs below are in the factory. Go ahead, next. 
So what we did early on with agriculture is we favored efficiency, a uh, human sense of efficiency not effectiveness and not uh, it was a human economy not nature's economy and it gave us things like this go ahead next and so what we found out is that uh, we needed to look at not the human growth economy and the short-term financial gain but to begin to look at the regeneration of our soil fertility bank and to not just take uh, but to return Next. Those choices did say, sever or paid a, played a role in severing our relationships. So effectiveness gives us something like this, where we have turkeys and chickens uh, in the corn and building soil. So this is a brief about, uh, this is our mission statement. And we see ourselves as a, a, as I liked what Alex said about being practical. For me, um, all of the spiritual business which uh, works for me must work uh, i uh, it's not something i believe in for me it's not about belief it's about whether it works or not and so what we will see uh, are things we've tried and uh, they're metaphysical and they're physical and it's the combination of the two that works next so uh we have set up a 244-acre ranch outside of Carbondale, Colorado, near Aspen and Glenwood, uh, the Roaring Fork Valley, on the western slope of Colorado. And uh, here is, it, it, we own nothing. Uh, this is uh, owned by the organization. And it gives us an opportunity to work and to try things. Uh, being go ahead next slide being artist of course we and not having been uh, if you push the next return this will start to fill in one at a time there you go so yeah 240 acres and we're uh, preserving the agricultural heritage and we have a conservation easement on the land and one more there uh, we did put some buildings under historic covenants and one more time and it's uh, created a home, permanent home for our investigation and our research here. Okay, next. And so we do see the ranch as a laboratory. And the idea being that uh, we don't know what we're doing. I, I like to say in my bio that I'm perfectly unqualified for what I do every day. And that uh, I start the day ignorant, so to speak, and listening. I like, I wrote down the other day, ecstatic listening. And uh, those two words sometimes don't seem like they belong together, but for me, it's about listening to what is there. And building an island of health is our goal. Uh, and that means that we're building diversity in every way in our choices and the species we bring in and or the arenas we set up uh the ecosystem that we're helping co-create to encourage diversity and and because that brings balance and health in all systems next so we see the ranch as a super organism uh, rudolf steiner in his agricultural lectures in 1924 uh left us with some amazing tools and also some important thinking. And one of them was that our farms and our ranches are whole farm individualities. He had come off of his research on the human body and his medical work, anthroposophic medicine. And when the farmers asked for his help, he uh, reinforced the idea that the farm, the land uh, that you're responsible for is a whole organism and it is and so the elements within are organs so to speak and they are they are circulation and circulatory systems so we have a, a raw dairy it's a a2a2 raw dairy i don't know if i have time to get into all of that it's 100 percent grass fed we have about 100 families on that milk this is rose on the left uh my uh 
irreplaceable and most important person in my life, my wife. And uh, Zophar, uh, a young photo of our land, uh, our herdsman and land manager, Zophar Sabo, who's now nine years with us. Next. We are Demeter certified, which is the certifying agency for biodynamics. Uh, also, so we're milking uh, these days 15 cows, uh, and uh, there's a share price, uh, and we have a wait list, of course. Uh, if anybody decides they don't want the milk anymore or they move, there's always someone right behind. Next. The only thing between you and the cow and this milk is a cotton filter. So no pasteurization and no uh, anything else. And the cows are 100% grass fed uh, on our biodynamic pastures and uh, drinking the mountain streams. Uh, Anyway, so other micro enterprises are the uh, vegetable CSA. We work closely with farmer uh, chef collaborators uh, in the area who also are a soil test for us. Go ahead. Their palates, so to speak, uh, are soil tests. Uh, we've been doing this for 23 years, so there weren't words uh, and coined phrases for a lot of what we were doing. But uh, now it's called farm to table and it's called these, all these other things. But uh, it's been important for us to bring people to the land uh, and for them to taste the soil and taste the ranch, so to speak, and, and our, uh, in, our intentions. Each year we have a harvest festival. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, next. This brings together many people. We always honor either an organic or biodynamic farmer or someone like uh, Wes Jackson or Elliot Coleman, if they are here, you know, uh, in the uh, out here to speak or something. So it's uh, each, every one of them has said, "Oh, I've never been given an award." <laughs> so we don't honor our farmers enough. Go ahead. Next. Uh, we do a lot of experiments. We implement all kinds of uh, natural systems and also uh, uh, energy, renewable energy system. This is a methane digester that we tried uh, 10 years ago. Go ahead. And we also uh, teach and demonstrate all forms of green building. This is us managing uh, to uh, close in uh, for a brooder with straw bales and local earth. Go ahead. We also host lectures. Uh, Temple Grandin's just an incredible woman, a uh, brilliant engineer who is uh, on the autism spectrum, but uh, has managed to survive in our rather ruthless <laughs> meat industry and is actually teaching at, uh, at CSU also. And we brought her in to consult and to speak. But she's one example of uh, also part of our education program. Go ahead. Um, part of our education are these signs that uh, are uh, we're a mile and a half along the highway, and these are the signs that dot the uh, fence uh, to us. It's uh, genetic and or chemical trespass uh, to use anything near our place. We are a biodynamic ranch. Next. Uh, so we host uh, learning situations from universities. Here's the CU Boulder Architecture and Planning Department. We worked with them for seven years, um, and but we I'll go ahead next. We work with all ages. Uh, there are many children's groups and homeschool groups, and that come by. And most schools in the valley uh, and in the Denver region uh, come out, and the colleges come from all over the country. Uh, uh, we've taught permaculture here through Scott Pittman uh, for the, for 12 years, so people are getting their design certification here. Next. And we host field days on different issues. Go ahead. Different methods and practices. Here's Send Our Cats. If you haven't read uh, Wild Fermentation or any of his work, uh, or you ever have a chance to get see him uh, speak uh, and to make uh, fermented vegetables, don't miss it. Go ahead next. So this is a part of our reskilling. We're uh, educating the next generation of land stewards through our internship program and volunteer programs, uh, and our young apprenticeship programs. Next. 
And here we favor uh, not the theory, but the practice. So I joke about phenomenon versus phone nomenon, meaning a smartphone, of course. Go ahead. And this is uh, what we do with the children when they come on the bus. The first thing is uh, we load them up into a lambing jug and uh, uh, we already have uh, their hearts, but uh, we're subversive in our education. We want them. We want their minds as well. And so, so parents uh, sometimes are not so sure about their experience. The children get here. Go ahead next. Um, we've uh, we've had uh, Corwin Bell, who's a brilliant uh, bee guardian. Again, uh, he's honoring his calling, and we've trained. We have. Uh, he's taught 12 years here of organic and biodynamic uh, beekeeping. And we've helped start uh, oh, almost 500 hives probably in these last years, go ahead, in our area. Uh, we respond to the needs. This was a Earth, uh, Nepali earthquake fundraiser that came together uh, in a restaurant, a Nepali restaurant with a bunch of community members. Uh, six days later, seven, uh, 700 people showed up and we raised $60,000 and, and we sent people with money into Nepal uh, to work with villages that were not being represented by the bulk or the main effort. Next. So uh, we have uh, different forms of data. We have people, the work we're doing is um, suspect uh, or is questionable by some folks. And, and so, um, we uh, we not only have the chefs and their taste and their flavor and the customers clamoring for the product and and the school groups coming, but we also do the scientific uh, laboratory test. And so the USDA or the NRCS came to us in 2014 and asked asked us to be part of a 50 farm and ranch study. Next, and they decided. Uh, you can change the slide. They, they decided to test the life in the soil. Oh, this slide is disoriented, but it doesn't matter. You're not supposed to read it. It's just to show you that we have tons of data, laboratory data about the various things. And so here's a comment from uh, our soil conservationist from the NRCS or the USDA field office. And he's like, good God, man, right off the bat. Your total biomass is up 24%, and you know, on and on and on. And so they're a bit astounded by uh, their own data, uh, meaning they come and take the soil test. You next, and um, so again, uh, more commentary. We can go by this, but the idea being here uh, next. The idea being here is that we uh, these are the trends. So if you look at these closely, the blue and whatever, I'm colorblind, so is that green, I hope? <laughs> um, they're uh, the trend lines, and those are four years of soil test in two different pastures. So the blue is one pasture and the green is another pasture. And due to our good sound physical management, but also to our metaphysical work and our intentions, that we have actually been increasing since 14, really since 12. Um, the soil respiration, or, or which is a, an indicator of all the various organisms in the soil, has gone through the roof, has gone, uh, taken off. Uh, this was something they gave us uh, for the first four years. And they saw the 200, they decided 200 parts per million was uh, the most anybody would ever even dream of getting. And when they saw this, they they said, well, you might uh, go off the charts, so to speak. We might have to up the thing. So next slide. Uh, here is the fifth year. We actually broke the 200 level. They did have to expand it to 200. 50 parts per million. And so this is an indication of the the, the life in the soil and um, and how it's really uh, happy and balanced and healthy and doing it uh, their individual jobs and in unison to co-create uh, greater flavor, greater health and nutrition and to bring abundance here. Go ahead. And this is showing the fungal biomass. I don't want to geek, uh, soil geek you out too much. But uh, here again, if you follow these trends of the two different pastures, 
uh, you can see that uh, the fungal biomass or the fungi in the soil is on the increase too. Go ahead, next. Here, organic matter, the dark black line is about what we, uh, two and a half or so percent to organic matter, what we started with when we got here in 2003 or four. And 12 years later, the different pastures and the gardens are almost, the pastures are reaching almost 6%, which if you talk to anyone in the in the broad scale business there, uh, that is just, that's actually more impressive than the garden one in the middle there that is very high, 10 and a half and 11%. Go ahead, next. So these are your these are the NPKs that are typically measured in uh, agriculture, the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium levels. And as you can see, this is just uh, uh, over a two year period. We're on the increase there as well. Go ahead. Uh, this is a research poster. Go ahead. It's really talking about biodynamics efficacy. So what we say here and teach here is really that we need to be careful of what we know it might get in our way and so first of all we know it's important to work on the horizontal and the physical so go ahead so we work with uh, we have uh, integrated pest management we build habitat around the ranch in different ways uh, for the beneficial insects and the beneficial beings. Uh, we also are using innovations in uh, pasture uh, renovation. Uh, this is called the yeoman's plow. Uh, we do work with tractors, but also with draft horses. And our credo basically is when we design a system, is it needs to be passive and durable and simple as possible uh, because nature is really brilliant. Next. And we that way we let nature work. Uh, Andre Vosin is an incredible uh, S Swiss uh, scientist who left the laboratory and he went out to the pasture to watch the cows and see what they did. And this is the beginnings of rotational grazing meant, uh, that Alan Savory and others have brought to fruition too. And these are methods of how we can, how it's not that cows are bad, it's how they're managed. So next, cows actually are incredible fermentation tanks and properly managed, uh, click the button there and these things will pop up. Uh, through our diverse animal program and moving the uh, different animals across the land, um, we gain a, a rich uh, fertility cycle. Of course, there's value in the meat and the and the other products and the milk and dairy and such and eggs from the them. Go ahead. And uh, again, it's multiple benefits and multiple manures because they each eat differently could be, and harvest from each different plant the different stratas of soil and nutrition. And so they that brings it up and stirs it all up. Go ahead, next. Uh, you know, uh, our largest solar collector is basically our 90 acres of irrigated land. Uh, we have that and we have 150 wild land also. But uh, so uh, here, uh, these uh, lambs are cutting the grass, fertilizing, uh, aerating, of course, with their hooves. Uh, and they're also creating meat and milk and hides. And so, uh, it's about everybody being happy and having a good life and maybe only one bad day, so to speak. And that includes carrots as well as animals. <laughs> um, yeah, well, you just have to put this slide in. Uh, they're 50% uh, uh, entertainment, the pigs, and 50% bacon, I guess. Uh, compost manures, uh, we, we have most animals on pasture, but they do come in periodically. So once a year, uh, go ahead, we, we scrape up the yards of the various animals that have used the different yards. And, um, and we uh, take all of the wood chips and sawdust and leaves, which are the bedding, so that they have a nice surface to live on. And that's the carbon. Uh, and then the animals add the nitrogen and this begins the compost cycle. Next slide. Uh, 
So this is part of our regeneration and our return. Uh, all the compost piles, we put the biodynamic uh, preparations in uh, so that this brings in the uh, cosmic uh, and earthly influences into what is very physical. So this, uh, they bring in the, the spiritual or intentional uh, elements. And then we also add some other things and go ahead. And then these get turned and the, and the compost is spread back onto the field. So we ask these questions, simple and difficult ones. How do we measure success? And we're in a culture right now that really is uh, based on quantity and not quality. So my neighbor brags about the tonnage of hay, for instance, that he brings in, but he has a very low quality nutrient density, whereas I might bring in one ton or less per acre than he does, uh, even uh, a quarter less than he does. But when I test my nutrient density, I'm way past his. And so this is a very, uh, in, it's a difficult thing to convince others about because they measure quantity, not quality. Go ahead. So there's hard data and uh, the third party laboratory soil tests we have. But the other way we measure this and how we measure our success is, you know, what of truth and beauty and what of flavor. So next. So we work with chefs and we have a group of chefs. Uh, our flavor profiles and our food has actually taken us to New York to be with uh, Dan Barber uh, at Blue Hill in Manhattan and at Stone Barn. Uh, he tasted our milk because of our son was working with him and kind of dared him to taste our milk. And so I shipped a gallon of milk to Dan and he did a taste test. And uh, this is what he said that we built, uh, we beat his old Blue Hill farm up in his family farm and that he wanted us to come out and speak. And we did that, but, and then, and then we work in Aspen with uh, Barclay Dodge a Bosque restaurant who uh, really understands the depth of flavor and the potency of uh, the flavor profiles in our food. So that's another form of data. Next. This is a go again. That's just more. Next slide. So Wendell Berry is one of my mentors, of course. Uh, and he says something very simple, uh, that it all hinges on affection. Next. So biodynamics and other land therapies that we're doing. Um, we jokingly say that what we've started is not the sustainable settings, but the Farmer Rehabilitation Center. Uh, of course, the acronym there is FARS. Uh, but uh, here we uh, really basically need to just change our minds and listen. So next slide. So uh, my neighbors are pretty clear that uh, I'm crazy. So you can, now you're meeting the nut job uh, down the road. And here I am spraying a biodynamic preparation. So not only do we have the physical or the horizontal, but we have the vertical. And it wasn't until we addressed this that we really began to understand the, uh, the strength of our intention. And so just because we can't imagine it yet, uh, doesn't mean it isn't so. And so we teach a lot uh, and we mentor and we consult. Uh, next slide. And so as, Steiner, as Dr. Steiner and others, uh, and other faiths and other thought leaders have helped us understand is that our imagination is a place where we are free we don't have gravity to deal with, for instance, and uh, it's a place where we can work. And as artists, we understood this very well. And uh, nothing could be truer than as above and so below. So next. So how do we manifest the unmanifest is what intrigues us. And we've come to, uh, as Alex said, practical ways to do this. And now we, and we've been doing it here on the land. Um, we're making up words now and again, but uh, <laughs> pharma nominology is a new is a, a mouthful. But uh, what we are understanding is that we are farming in a dynamic, uh, in a and, and we are working in a phenomenon. Go ahead. Next. 
So uh, CNN or whatever your favorite news station is, the breaking news from the universe is that everything is alive. And this is uh, this has come uh, to bear in all of our working and, and methods. Go ahead next to understanding that uh, even Einstein, to, you know, got to right up to consciousness and all of his quantum mechanics and his mathematical calculations. And he said, uh, okay, it's spooky actions. He couldn't tell, tell us what it really was. And so we, we are quanta and we are stardust and, and we are consciousness. And, and when we're, it's woven all together, we begin to be able to communicate uh, with all things. And so I take uh, Wendell's statement and I say it all hinges on relationships and our relationships with all things. And so in that, we begin to build a meta language and a meta dialogue. And we acknowledge the macrocosm, the cosmos and all the planets and the forces and their alignments and all the uh, angels and archangels and all the other levels, depending on how you see it. But we also acknowledge the little ones in the microcosm. This is gut flora in a human human gut flora. Uh, next slide. And so these are the farmers. Next. These are the ones doing the work. I'm not a farmer. I'm not a rancher. It's these, this incredible system. You can give these a couple seconds is all you need. But this is uh, all we do is set up the arena for this uh, for these beings and these entities to do their best work, not to poison them, not to drill them underneath the ground, not to beat them up, you know, and to work with them and talk with them. This uh, punch the uh, yeah. Can we play this just a minute? Can you play it? Yes, there might be some sound interfering while we're doing that, but yeah, let's try. Give it a try. Oops, just a second. I'll just play it without the sound. Play it without the sound. Can you turn off the sound? slide. Sorry for the, can you hear me? Uh, next slide. Yes. Okay. Sorry for the soundtrack there. It didn't sound like it went well, but the idea being there is that this was a, just a bit of our compost uh, and the life in it is astounding and, and uh, we really are not doing the work. They are the farmers. I'm just reminding you again that this is the physical scientific soil data that is demonstrating that what we are doing is working because where we're going from here is uh, into the metaphysical. Next. 
So we come to understand that really everything matters. The Romans spoke of genius loci or the spirit of place. And many, many other cultures have had the uh, strong relationships with all of the beings that they co-create with. Uh, it just seems we've gotten lost. So we work with the seen, the physical, and with the unseen, the metaphysical or the spiritual. And uh, we do this with uh, our intentions, with our eye. Next. So, the food that we've created that we create and the exceptional flavor and the potency in our medicinal herbs and all these other things that are evidence are really just byproducts of our real effort and our real effort is to create a whole healthy farm organism next so biodynamics and uh, what is bio bio is uh, that of indicating or involving life in living organisms and the dynamic aspect is you know the productive and vigorous and energetic effective uh, and forceful potent driving forces that are behind life and that uh, bring life next so uh, Dr. Steiner uh, delivered the, these lectures uh, in, 2000, in 1924, not so long ago, and uh, it was called the Spiritual Foundation for the Renewal of Agriculture. And in that, next slide, he, uh, he uh, this is my copy, which has been read 25 times at least, and uh, the, I would, the, because he spoke or wrote such in uh, alchemical language, uh, every time I go back into it, I begin to understand more and more and more. And so what is Mercury? Who is Mercury? Who is, uh, who is Jaro? Who is Chamomile? And how are they uh, conduits, so to speak, or uh, the preparations made uh, land therapies that we make to help bring balance and harmony back to basically uh, an ecosystem that we've disturbed next um, so here uh, it's important for us to incorporate with the to have the physical activity and have the physical substances in line but to, like the compost pile that's covered in straw right there but also to have the the metaphysical uh, and these are the horns that are being that are put into the ground with quartz crystals go next slide so the basic uh, land therapies that Steiner gave us to to test first of all and and then to use uh, are have uh, correspondences with different planetary uh, bodies and alignments and and each one is unique uh, and uh, basically gives us the foundation of a uh, we might say an apothecary for the land next I'm going to go through these very quickly. This one, keep up for a second. Uh, what Steiner gave us an understanding of, and as we go back into other traditions, of course, we see it echoing through all of these things. But there's there's uh, yin and yang, uh, there's mother, father, there's earth, and there's light, and the cosmos, right? There's quality and quantity. Uh, the mother is uh, fertility, and the father is form. And so uh, the cow manure is the mother, or, and, uh, and the quartz crystal is light or the father. And so these two are two polarities that create a marriage or the bride and the groom. And when they are in harmony and moving back and forth, uh, we have uh, beauty and abundance and we have harmony. When we when we disturb, when there's too much mother or too much father, uh, we see it in the landscape. And this is the metal language I mentioned earlier. Next slide. That helps us diagnose things in the land. So we live in North America. One of the things we're doing is uh, we are uh, experimenting with what uh, Dr. Steiner gave us year, uh, 95 years ago. He is, his indications were based in Europe. And so he rightfully chose the cow 
and the cow or the cattle are what built the soils in that continent, in that area. But for us, the bison uh, built more of the soils in North America. And so we're doing cow, we're using cows uh, and their products and uh, their gestures. But we also have begun to work with the bison and we are finding it very potent and powerful uh, and uh, apropos for our work here in North America next. So this is the bicycle, this is the mother, the 500. We uh, literally fill the horns with cow manure. We've also stirred them and uh, used things, other preparations in them to emphasize certain qualities. We can go ahead next and then these get buried uh, in, at Michaelmas or in the fall, and these go through the winter celestials. So they harvest that of uh, those forces. Go ahead. And uh, here's uh, one on the physical level. You could say we're harvesting the indigenous microbes and beneficial bacteria and things uh, and fungi. Uh, in this, but this is a sample of what comes out of the horn at the uh, the next uh, in the spring, and this becomes uh, the preparation or the mother preparation, biodynamic 500 or horn manure. Next, it is a, no longer, of course, horn manure, and, and it is not just compost. It is the uh, being uh, with our intention and put into these horns. It's it harvests other forces and things that uh, one small handful can do uh, an acre of land next can fertilize one acre of land the father or the silica is light and form and quality and we actually crush different forms of silica to uh, also be put in horns next slide and uh, there, uh, this is a little, the, you can have her stir this if you want, it's a little video. Push the button there, yeah. I don't know how well that, but we also, you can see the gold flakes. The gold is the mineral of the sun. And this is another uh, element of what we are adding in. So we're adding the mineral gestures and also the animal gestures, and we're adding our soul and spirit uh, uh, gestures into these next slides and so here is the father or the silica being buried um, and these go through the summer celestials they're put in the ground in the spring and unearthed in the fall uh, we'll do that next week actually ne next Another, another uh, preparation is the yarrow preparation and this thing this uh, is for pot, potash or potassium. Uh, this brings, and it uses uh, sulfur as a carrier or driver in the soil system that helps improve nitrogen and the hydrogen and uh, strengthens the astral connections. This, uh, this is put into a, an elk or deer stag or male uh, bladder, and that's buried also in the fall next. Uh, we go up in wild craft up into the mountains. Uh, we're not, uh, we can drive within a half an hour uh, and we will bring in yarrow and nettle. Go ahead. We also grow those uh, elements on the land here and other farmers, biodynamic farmers will donate or help us with certain elements. This is yarrow or the 502, which is uh, Venus. Next. Chamomile is related to mercury, and uh, this is gathered and grown as well. And this gives us um, uh, the gestures of mercury and the moving of forces and uh, somersaults that sometimes we need uh, in uh, in the uh, process farming process. And we literally are bearing these little sausages. Uh, in the in the fall next, and they go all through the winter celestials. So it's a community effort. Many hands and hearts come together when we do this, and we uh, process the flowers and we fill them, fill the different sheaths. Go ahead next, 
and uh, quite often there's singing and chanting and other things that go on during the process. Here's a, a, the bison uh, lower intestines that are filled like sausages for the chamomile and the dandelion pillows you see in the, on the upper left. And here's a friend, uh, uh, Betsy Fifield, who is actually packing the skull of the bison with uh, oak bark for the oak bark preparation. Next. These, uh, uh, this is nettle that is gathered and the, the, uh, it's connected with Mars and is, uh, Steiner said, plant nettle, stinging nettle in the heart of your farm. It's about blood and heart and circulation and iron uh, and those things. And uh, it kindles the life in the earth and improves nitrogen and hydrogen functions. And uh, this is an important one. This is uh, Biodynamics 504, the nettle prep. Go ahead. Next, yeah. And so here's wild nettle that we gather, but we also grow it. And here we are processing it and getting it ready to go into the ground. Next. And oak bark uh, is an interesting one. Each of the preparations has an intelligence. And uh, we not only use them in our compost piles, but we, uh, uh, but we overspray the ranch with them at different points in time. Uh, this one brings in living calcium and, uh, and, and, and dampens down the etheric forces to help combat plant diseases. Uh, I've used it for um, fire blight in my orchard and other things like that. Uh, so incredible and this isn't so this one this one is considered a gatekeeper also next sorting out what needs to come through the gatekeeper and and not what it doesn't need to come through and so the these uh these skulls uh the brain cavities are stuffed with the oak bark and then it's buried in the swampy area you see that little photo there's kind of about a, a creek right there and so that leaks in and this is uh you know, this is uh, matured or transformed in, in a, it's related to the moon or moisture. So it has its different uh, place on the ranch. Go ahead. And then dandelion is uh, related to um, Jupiter. So it's the largest planet. It's about abundance and and it brings in uh, inwardly sensitive uh, to the uh, silic uh, silicic acid and from the cosmos and the saturated influences from that and uh, and it's really about uh, bringing about uh, the relationship of uh, phosphorus and silica. Go ahead. And the cow mesentery. Go ahead, next slide. We harvest from the cow and little pillows are made and they're put in, and then they're buried uh, again in the fall. I should say that the the animal organs that we harvest are also from an animal that is ready for market. Uh, go next slide. Uh, here's the, these are the pits that uh, are marked uh, with the sign of Jupiter and the number of the preparation. And they are uh, there until they're transformed. Go ahead, next. Uh, valerian is, the, is a, we juice the flower. Again, this is phosphorus and uh, helps compost mature and it stimulates the fruiting and flowering and actually, in uh, frost conditions, uh, we have found that Jupiter is about warmth and fire. And so we have uh, sprayed this on our fruit trees to help us get through killing frost. And it can add three, four, five degrees uh, protection to uh, the fruit varieties. Next. Uh, so here again, we're juicing this and, and we don't have uh, animal sheaths in this case. These are put into these small jars and they are fermented. Next. Aquisetum is a uh, horsetail. It's one of the oldest living plants and um, it's high in silica. So it's uh, like the quartz. 
is the form of mineral silica. This is the plant silica. And we use this on a, a number of ways. Go ahead. Those are the foundational preparations. Here's wild equisinum. And we also, uh, we are selling this, these uh, we make and offer these up to farmers who don't, do not want to do all the work through biodynamic source, uh, which is uh, Lloyd Nelson and I started uh, in 2016 to help make the preparations and educate and advance them uh, next and also to make available to others. This is preparation storage. Uh, it's very important. These are uh, crocs with the different preparations in them, surrounded by peat moss and stored underground. And uh, it's, it's important that they can be kept properly. Next. And so many farmers and ranchers come to us and we help them through uh, how to use these fertilizers uh, and preparations to help improve their dynamics on their ranches and farms. Next. So we have an apothecary for the land. These are like herbal treatments for your body, but uh, they're for the land and all the entities and beings that we co-create with. Next. Uh, here's where we keep the silica. This is about light, and so it is stored in the window in the light, uh, just to give you an idea of the, how we take care of the different uh, preparations. So throughout the ranch, you will see these different pits, and we don't just put them in the ground and come back six months later. We keep them in our intention throughout the year, and sometimes we'll even go visit them and uh, stir up the same preparation that they are making to uh, maintain the, our intentions. Go ahead. All of this adds to the potency. And so this is a homeopathy is a way to understand it. It's putting a parts per billion or million gesture out onto the land uh, with our intentions. And uh, it's not dumping tons and tons of things out there, which is the purely physical aspect. Next. And uh, through this gesture and through harvesting the different forms and forces uh, uh, that we work with uh, and structured water, uh, in our applications that emphasizes and potentizes these gestures so that when they go out onto the land, they go out with great uh, potency. Uh, here's an intern uh, cat who is um, stirring uh, and creating a, a dynamic uh, structuring uh, of, a po of a preparation that we will then uh, send out through a sprayer. Next. Again, uh, next. So there's a base level of work, and then there's a graduated level as our relationships improve and we increase our commitment. And the Three Kings preparation is something very special. It's frankincense, myrrh, and gold that we grind on New Year's Eve uh, during the 12 holy nights. And then at Epiphany, next slide. We uh, we apply uh, this preparation as a border, as uh, on the outside of the property, to make a promise and a pledge to all the elementals, all the beings and entities within the ranch that uh, we will again work with them uh, for the next coming year. Next. So we also work uh, with the rhythms, and thanks to Maria Thun's work and Colisco's uh, uh, work um, and Steiner's work, we understand that there are flowers. And uh, give me another. Uh, give me the next slide. There's there's the root rhythm, and there are the inner and outer planetary influences that we harvest and, and um, utilize to improve our stewardship. Timing is important when we do certain things. There are leaf times and root times and flower times and fruit times. Next slide. And so that's, uh, so these, uh, 
things that can spook uh, the secular group a little bit are really just different ways or metaphors. And so when we teach, we try to bring people to this uh, so that they can understand that there, there's, there are alignments uh, around us and surrounding us that uh, encourage plants to uptake minerals from the air in their leaf or uh, in their roots or in the or express themselves in the flower or the fruit and seed uh, at different rhythms each month. Next slide. This is a calendar that you can pick up. Uh, these are again showing some of the rhythms and trines that uh, are, when those are happening in the cosmos, these are optimum or optimal times to work in these different parts of the plants. Next. Uh, again, I think we can keep going, but let's go again. Here's the month, oh, go back one. The, that's a monthly calendar, if you look back, just in the diff, the yellow is flower, the leaf is blue, and the, you know, the flower's red. So these, this very, this is very detailed, and this is uh, Maria Thun's calendar, and, and, and you can buy these for 14 or $15, and they can guide your practice. Next. Very practical. Uh, my wife makes yogurt, and so oftentimes I get this, what do they get this cocked, uh, this head cocking and weird look from people, but uh, Rose used to make yogurt. Sometimes it would work, and sometimes it would be very watery, and sometimes it would be very thick and nice. And so we started to watch it, and we found out that when you work on a root uh, uh, or Earth Day or a flower or a leaf, in a water time, the yogurt didn't work as well. But when, if you think about what is happening in the yogurt, it's about flower and fruit. It's a blooming or a blossoming. Uh, and so we began to, she began to make yogurt, for instance, on fruit and flower times and having success every time. Next. So there's a, not just agriculture. Here's some of uh, Maria Thun's research with the planetary rhythms. Uh, this is uh, one plant but uh, 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 seeds planted on different rhythms and she from the same species and she got very different uh, expressions okay next uh, and here's a, a broccoli experiment by her uh, the top one is uh, is put a, planted uh, on a uh, blossom or a fruit time uh, uh, yes and the other one is on a leaf time you see the different expressions in broccoli. Uh, here's more research about uh, too much to talk about, but uh, experiments with uh, lettuce that uh, just by hoeing the ground on different rhythms, how it affected the uptake of the of the plant. Go ahead. Brooke, I wanted just to say that my computer is running low on battery, and so we can lose the slides uh, any moment. Uh, the webinar still will continue, nothing will be interrupted, but slides might disappear. So if there are any specific slides that you want to show for sure, maybe we could jump there. Okay, well, Just let's uh, bump ahead. I don't have the guide to give you a number. Hold on here. Uh, so I'm going to have you just go forward. Go ahead, there's lots to talk about. We work with geometries in different ways. Uh, the okay, go ahead. Uh, oh, did we lose you? <laughs> I don't see the full image. I see. Oh, there, you're letting me see. Okay, let's go down, down, down um, to the see the hexagon in the circle, number one forty one. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. Well, go yeah, to one, so, 141. Uh, yeah, my my uh, computer is dead on battery, so sorry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I gave oh. you two, two sh short warning, but maybe that's a sign for us that it would give us at least uh, 10, like five minutes maybe for like, if we usually give more time for the questions, but this time the the richness of the information that you're sharing with us is so okay. uh, abundant, so it was a pity to stop you. But okay. 
Uh, sorry mm -hmm. about that. I didn't time it well. Um, but yes, I, 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 there's lots to talk. About. Yeah, Go maybe ahead. you can just if you, uh, sorry it was uh, like interruption for for your thought, but maybe if you we have uh, another few minutes to wrap up, and if there would be any quick questions before we have a blessing ceremony. That, that sounds good. Yeah, the, okay. So please uh, just the floor is yours. The microphone is yours. Okay. Continue. Uh, please. So uh, should we just take questions then? Um, yeah, we can do that as well. And so I would ask Daniela to help with the muting and muting uh, people if anyone has uh, uh, any questions or comments to share. Uh, and also uh, to do that, please uh, use the function raise your hand on your control panel and we will unmute you uh, or just write your comments in the uh, comment section. But unfortunately, we have very little time. So maybe. Uh, we could accumulate the questions and figure out how to follow up on those. Okay. And Daniela, please uh, tell us if there are any raised hands. Otherwise, Brooke, please continue. No raised hands for the moment. So do you want me to kind of wrap up a little bit and then uh, go to a... Yeah, we have another 15 minutes, so just this 15 minutes are yours. And if there will be any questions, Daniela will um, let us know. So 15 minutes to speak or to just to, for, to, uh, uh, for, for all together. All together. So, yeah, for okay. blessings and to wrap okay. up uh, your presentation. Yeah. That's good. So um, I guess uh, for me as a steward, um, really every day and at every turn and every moment, I'm given an opportunity to really enter into relationship uh, with all of the life, I call it, capital A, capital L for life, or the light, uh, the quanta, uh, the essence or quintessence. And so uh, all around us are, are these possibilities for relationship or you might call them portals. And so here on the ranch, I find myself venturing out into the light and life, uh, myself being a conduit uh, and in so joining in on the multitude of frequencies. Uh, and I, uh, it doesn't take much really, but uh, we need to envision this um, uh, sometimes challenging to put into words, but it, it is as if, uh, I am or my being is at once, uh, like the last slide that Kate showed, uh, as a radiant source and each ray of myself is a vector uh, of an inner awareness and each ray of me is really entering or joining in and going into uh, allowing me access. Uh, and so in this quiet, uh, I or my I, is not diminished in any way. In fact, it's enlivened beyond words, really. And so uh, the stewardship practices that we're doing uh, uh, light up for us the, the, tr the truth or the understanding that uh, we are in fact uh, in dialogue and that we are in an ether or we are even part of the ether, the essence. And uh, some call consciousness or God. Uh, in this place of no space and time, uh, I'm free and we are free, you are free to form the imaginations which uh, allow us to work with and to find the unlimited possibilities for us to understand our wholeness and to tap into what we are truly capable of. Um, and so the most common everyday object that uh, or interaction or phenomenon that I run across the every day on the farm, on the ranch, um, is really a possibility to, to open up to this. And uh, so I guess, yes, I talk to my soil, I talk to my trees, I talk to my grasses, and, and they're not mine, but I talk to these beings and entities that are really doing their brilliant job and just in my gesture of doing so we light up a dialogue 
and celebrate together kind of the astounding web of life that each member is part of. And uh, so, and because of that uh, intimate and improved relationship, uh, we all are doing our part to bring into being really uh, the complete wholeness. And so it's a shift, this shift in our work and in our thinking that has shown uh, up even in the scientific laboratory soil test and in the flavor of our food and in the potencies of our medicinal plants. And in the people who come by and just comment, I feel so good, you know, when I come here. Um, and so, there is one way scanned. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. There is one way scanned from Christine. Um, there's what? There is Christine who would like to speak. Christine, oh. you're unmuted, so please go on. Okay, okay good. Hello. Hi. Can you hear? Yes, the vitality of this talk has confirmed what I have always said that you must have high vibratory food to reach peak spirituality. And spirituality is the goal of our life. So if doctors are looking for a way to extend life, as I have been told by Dr. Weil 20 years ago, you have found the key. And I bless you, continue on. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, but I know nothing. <laughs> I'm only listening and uh, and uh, thank you uh, Rudolf Steiner and thank you all these other practitioners that have taught me all I've done is do what I'm told so to speak <laughs> and but I appreciate it and, and you're welcome and uh, you're right and and this is a Steiner quote too he was told uh, he was asked by Pfeiffer on the train one time why why aren't piece of people getting your message and he stopped for a minute and he said it's nutrition it's the lack of nutrition and the lack of cosmic nutrition or the four levels of nutrition the physical the etheric the soul and the spirit it's not in our food unless we uh, work in harmony like this. And so much of the industrial production of our food is really lacking and not feeding our spirit and our soul. Yeah, so good for you, you got it. <laughs> um, there is also, there are several comments and one is from Raisa D who gives us a um, link to uh, Maria Stone's biodynamics guide, which I will copy in the chat. And then there is a message from Olga Deligianis, who says, thank you for your presentation. Very, very interesting. Here in Greece, there is a big community and many groups try to serve traditional seeds and use traditional ways with respect to Mother Earth. Mm. Please, your site I guess, uh, I suppose, if you can, the, the question is about providing site. Yeah, the, the, it's, I believe it's sustainablesettings.org. Is that right, Brooke? That's correct, sustainablesettings.org. Um, yes, and we also have the biodynamic source uh, .org, which is the preparation website. And uh, also biodynamic botanicals, which is our medicinal herb. Then uh, there is a comment from Barclay. This is brilliant, and thank you for this new alchemy. We grow our all our foods biodynamically and follow the rhythms of planting. The foods are vital and alive. Rise up. Good, 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 good. Thank you for that work. Please thank all of them. We, uh, Rudolf Steiner told us to get these preparations out all over the earth as much as we can and as soon as we can. Uh, there's lots of good work to do in healing, healing our relationship. So that's fantastic. I think among all the ageless wisdom teachings that's been given in the 20th century, 
Rudolf Steiner's teaching is one of the most practical and biodynamic agriculture is really alchemical miracle that combines heaven and earth. And I've been well, taking it in biodynamic myself and I would, uh, I would have to say, Brooke, that the level of the uh, wisdom and the level of is a cherry layer of biodynamics that you shared today. I always been trying to get from my teachers, but it's, uh, it's still very alchemically hidden. But you are very generous sharing this with us. Well, it's it's my pleasure, and like I said, uh, don't believe anything I say. Try it. It works for me. But you have to make you have to see how it works for you. But I'm there's plenty of evidence out there. But really try it. Experiment is the key, definitely. So I think time wise we're getting very close to the end of our normal time uh, for webinars, so maybe you can take us into the ceremony of blessings. Please. Okay. So I uh, I uh, hold on. So we're really here today because of so many beings and entities and forces and forms and uh, consciousness, God, whatever you decide is your definition or your identifying metaphor. And I am grateful for the possibility and all of our possibilities to utilize these tools, these practical tools to bring us into relationship with all of these forces and forms and entities. It's actually an incredible, wonderful way to be. I don't understand why everyone doesn't do it. <laughs> but uh, I, I know from experience, for me at least, that it's important first to acknowledge them and to open the relationship and then to ask, always ask permission. And in our quiet, they are quick, they are quick to respond. <clears throat> and then with thy will, not my will, uh, move ahead and to re and to ask for these healing relationships between the uh, all the entities and beings and us and all of the life to bring about health <clears throat> and harmony and balance and to bring the bride and the groom the mother and the father back into good relations and and to bring about abundance Abundance that our ancestors knew because they were in a different relationship than we are today. So through our ecstatic listening, we can rediscover these tools and the opportunity to regenerate the earth and our relationships with the cosmos 
and bring about, as the one woman said, a true spiritual nature and to understand that we are really incredible beings and that we have a job to do and this is our work. And it goes all the way into the soil and back out again to full nutrition, to whole nutrition, the physical, the etheric, the soul, and the spirit, forms of nutrition that feed all levels of our being and ignite the possibility for us to be in tune again and to be truly nourished. So I'm grateful for all of that understanding and the doors that have been opened for me and hopefully for listeners and how we can, we can heal the earth. There is hope and we have the tools and it's our job to practice, practically apply these tools. And we can do it. We are doing it. And it works. Blessings to all. Thank you. Let's have a couple minutes of silence holding that intention together. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Beautiful sharing, and I hope. Um, you will be back and we'll continue sharing your experience and your wisdom with us. Well, I will work on getting the slides a little more focused and shorter, <laughs> but uh, there's so much 
Yes. Yes. And thank you for sharing that. Within the short time frame, that abundance of wisdom. Thank you. And You're thanks welcome. everyone for joining today. And uh, we're in the first day of the full moon. And the full moon will, the exact time of the full moon will be on uh, Saturday, September 16th. Um, and uh, please let's keep the tension of our group meditation, focusing on right relations with the planet. Hope, there is hope and there are tools. Thank you. And please join our coming webinars on September 22nd, the Festival Week Preparation Initiative will be holding the Silent Circle Gathering, bringing together circles from English-speaking countries, Spanish-speaking countries, and Russian-speaking countries together in simultaneous silent meditation. And our next New Moon webinar will be on September 29th. We will continue our work with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This time we will meditate and bring our collective intention to Goal 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth. And our next full moon webinar will be on October 14th. Our guests will be Michael Linfield. And on the energies of Libra, we will continue working with the topic of vision. And we will talk and ponder and reflect on choice is from unreal to the real. Thank you. Let's stay connected. Daniela, can you please uh, end the webinar? I will. Good evening, good day, everyone. Bye. Blessings. Yes. Goodbye, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.